Hello, this is Alex Plus LEDs, and this is the Jewel Thief kit. So this is what the kit looks like when it is assembled. So what this kit does, it sucks the last bit of energy out of a battery. So here I have a dead battery. I connect it to the kit, and it turns on an LED. However, this battery is indeed dead, and let me measure it, and its voltage is 0.7 volts. So that's truly dead. However, it still lights up the LED when connected to the Jewel Thief kit. So if you have a bunch of dead batteries, you can turn them into night lights. And just drain the last bit of energy out of the batteries before you throw them away or recycle them. So you need a couple tools to assemble this kit. The first tool you need is a soldering iron with a conical tip. Pretty much any soldering iron will work. You need wire cutters slash flush cutters to trim the leads of components. You need needle nose pliers to bend a couple of things into place. You need helping hands in order to hold a PCB while you're soldering to it. And this is what comes in the kit. You get one PCB, it looks like this. It's purplish and gold. You put components on it. You get one 1K ohm resistor. You get two 5 millimeter white LEDs. These are just regular white LEDs. You get two 2N3904 transistors, and they switch the coil on the toroid. And this is the toroid. It kind of looks like a donut. You get some red enameled wire. You get some green enameled wire, and both of these wires you wrap around the toroid, which we'll do later. You get some lead-free solder, and you get a paper clip. The paper clip is to connect to the battery. So let's get on with the assembly of the kit. So first thing you need to do is take your toroid, and we're going to wrap enameled wire around it. So you need to take your enameled wire, you need to get about a foot of each color, and then chop it off the excess. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to wrap these two wires in unison around this toroid. So what you need to do is feed the wire through, pull it all the way through. So there's one loop, and then we need to push the other end through the toroid like this. And once again, keep pulling to make a second loop. And a third loop, push the wire all the way through the toroid, and then pull it on the other end. And you need to do this about 20 times to get the best result. You could do it more or less. It doesn't really matter how many times you wrap the wire, as long as you get more than 10 around the toroid. So let's stuff the toroid onto the PCB. If you look at the PCB, there's a pad that's labeled red, a pad that's labeled green. What you want to do is, is take one side of those wires, and you want to put them in red and green and then pull all the wires all the way through so they're out of the way and do the same thing for the other side. Make sure you don't swap the wires or else the kit will not work. So once you've pulled those wires through, what we're gonna go ahead and do is clamp this into our helping hands. And now we're gonna solder the toroid into place. Make sure you solder it well. The enameled wire needs a little bit of heat in order for the enamel to come off and the solder to stick the copper inside the wire. And once the toroid has been soldered, what we're going to go ahead and do is clip off the excess wire that is poking through the PCB, all four leads. And now we're going to move on to the transistor. It looks like this. What you need to do is move the back pin, bend the back pin down a little bit, and then you could kind of fit it into the PCB like so. Push it all the way through and then bend the leads of the transistor out of the way so you could get your soldering iron to solder all those and clamp it in your helping hands and solder away. Make sure you kind of do this quickly because the transistor is sensitive to heat. You don't want it to get damaged. And once that's done, we're going to trim off the leads with the wire cutters to make sure that nothing gets shorted out. So there's all three leads trimmed. And now we're moving on to the LED. The LED has a long lead and a short lead. Short lead corresponds to the flat side of the LED. So we want the short lead to correspond to the flat side of the stencil on the PCB. So what you could do is push the LED all the way through like this. But I recommend kind of leaving it out like this. 
so that you could kind of point it at whatever you'd like later on. And we're going to bend the leads of the LED and clamp it in our helping hands and solder it into place. And once that's soldered, we're going to go ahead and trim off the excess leads, moving on to the 1K ohm resistor. So what you want to do is bend it into U shape and then stuff it into the board like this. If you have a hard time pushing it through, grab your needle nose pliers and kind of pull it through a little bit more to make it flush with the PCB. And then we're going to solder this resistor into place, solder the bottom and solder the top lead. And once those are soldered, we're going to go ahead and trim off the leads with our wire cutters so that you don't short out on anything. All right, so now it's time for the paper clip. So you need to unbend the paper clip like I am showing here. Just kind of unbend it into kind of like a cube almost like that. And then take your wire cutters and cut the paper clip in half right there. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is take our needle nose pliers and we're going to bend down a little tiny piece of it at a 90 degree angle so that you have a shape kind of like this. So you're going to stick that into that piece that you bent into the PCB. So you want to do the same thing on the other side. Take the end that you cut and bend it at a 90 degree angle down. So you have something like this. And we're going to stuff those into the PCB. You might need to wiggle it a little bit to get it to fit through the hole. But once it's fit, kind of moves back and forth, allowing you to adjust how far, how wide the gap is between the two paperclip leads, so you could adjust it for uh, your particular battery size. Now we're going to clamp it into our helping hands, and we're going to solder one of them into place. I like to solder these at the top part first, because it's easier to get to and the paper clip doesn't fall out when you solder to it like this. It might take a little bit of heat to get the solder to stick to the paper clip, but it's not too difficult. And once the top one has been soldered, we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the bottom one. Make sure you keep that gap about the size of a battery. And once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and connect this kit to a battery, and hopefully it works. Make sure you line up the positive with the positive of the battery. There's a little mark on the PC that shows you which side is positive. And once that's uh, you've verified it works, we're going to trim off the last bits of paper clip on the reverse side of the PCB and solder that up so that it is nice and tidy. Make sure you don't uh, add too much heat or else the paper clip might move. Just lightly heating these pads. And voila, the kit is done and hooking it up to our battery it still works so i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and i'll see you guys next time bye